In the last part of the series, we saw our first example of a view single file component. Specifically, we were working with this file app.view. And within here, we saw that we joined together all of the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS that we needed for this component into a single file. Now, in the case of app.view, this is like our parent component that lays out the overall uh, foundation for our application. What we're going to see more commonly, though, with components is the idea is to really divide and conquer, to think about the individual entities within your application and turn them into their own components. And to visualize this here in the notes, I have a generic diagram for a website where we can imagine different parts of the application being managed by separate components. For example, you could have a component for your navigation, a component for a notification menu, uh, as well as things like a little like search uh, widget. Right. And there's several advantages to this. One, just from a development perspective, it helps us break down the complexity of our application and really just focus on the individual pieces. Additionally, once we've done this, it makes it really easy to reuse code throughout our application because we have these nice self-contained units that we can just import and use as needed. And we can actually see that demonstrated in this diagram as well. If we zoom in on things like our notification menu component, we could see how the individual notification items that we might want to display could also be designed into their own single file components and just repeated as needed. So hopefully at this point, you can start to see the utility of single file components. Uh, let's dig into some more examples, though, to see them in action. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to revisit our flash word code and extract everything to do with our little individual word cards into their own components. To do this, let's head over to our code base and I'm gonna find the components directory within our source directory. And I'm gonna create a new file here. And I'm gonna call this wordcard.view. Right, so of course, all of our single file components that are always gonna end with a special .view extension. Uh, in terms of naming of components, the convention is to use Pascal case styling. So the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. And the other convention is that our component names are typically going to always contain at least two words, right? So the demo component they gave us was called hello world. And this one, we didn't just call it word.view, we're calling it wordcard.view. The reason that this convention exists is because when we go to use our components, which you'll, you'll see in a moment, we're going to treat them like regular HTML elements, right? That's kind of what we're doing. We're creating our own custom little elements. And we want to be able to distinguish from our customer elements from just default HTML elements. And uh, in the world of HTML, HTML elements are always single word named, right? We've got body, head, paragraph, H1, right? It's always just this like single word. So with our custom elements we're creating via these components, we're going to distinguish from that by using multi-word names. Uh, if you want to learn more about these conventions, I do have a link in the notes that accompany this video that goes over to the view documentation that gets into this. But to keep things simple, just remember two things. It's Pascal case uh, styling and uh, aim to have at least two words as part of your component name. So with this file set up, let's start to write out its contents. And like any single file component, we're always going to have a section for our JavaScript, a section for our HTML, which we'll put in a template element, and then finally, any CSS styles. And to this style, I'm going to add a attribute called scoped. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so that any CSS styles we're writing in here will only apply to content within the single file component. Uh, it provides a way to basically isolate our styles. And then that way we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, thinking about class names and ID names that are used throughout the application. We can really just focus on this particular entity. Everything is going to be scoped in this particular context. So with this scaffold laid out, let's start to fill in the details. Uh, let's start with a uh, template, the actual structure for our word card. Uh, and for this, we could just go back to app.view because we've already designed what the word card structure should look like. It's this div right here. So I'm just going to take this out of app.view and move it over into our component. With our HTML setup, let's turn our attention to our JavaScript. And what we're going to do, just like we did in our parent component, is we are going to export an object of options that are specific to this component. Right, and that's an important thing to understand. Our individual components, you can think of them as individual view instances with their, their own set of view options. All right, so let's set that up. We'll do export default. We're going to export a 
object from here. And in terms of what options we're going to need, let's go again back to app.view and see what of the things we've already written here are specific to the word card. Uh, and so let's look at our data first. Um, of course, we've got the words themselves. Uh, but what, what's going to happen is when we actually invoke this component, we're going to pass in the individual words. So we don't need to set that up as a data property. Uh, we have some computed properties that are going to shuffle the words and get a count of all the words. And again, that's thinking about all the words here where you just want to focus on individual words. So I don't think we need any of those computed properties. Uh, we don't need the watcher for correct count. The correct count is really um, specific to something that's beyond the context of the word card. So we don't need that. Uh, down here in methods, this check answer method, though, I think this is a good candidate for bringing this into our, our word card component because checking an answer is very much part of the functionality of the word card. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's copy this and we're going to add it to our options here. And there's a couple of modifications we're going to need to make to this method. But for now, let's finish filling in the rest of our options. Uh, and there's actually two new options I want to introduce um, in this uh, subcomponent. The first is we want to give it a name option. And I'm just going to name it after the file itself. So I'm just going to call it word card. Uh, and where this is going to be used is when we invoke this single file component from app.view, we're going to reference it by this name. The other option I want to introduce is something called props. And what props allow us to do is to pass in information to a component when we're using it. And how I want to use it in this particular case is I need to tell this component which word it actually needs to be working with. So the prop I'm going to define here is called word. Uh, and the syntax I'm defining this or using is I'm defining it as an array because the idea is we might have other properties that we could introduce to this component. Uh, but for right now, we just need word. With those options set up, there's a couple things we'll have to come back to this component to uh, tweak to get this working. But for now, let's turn our attention back to app.view where we're actually going to use this component. And the first thing I want to do to make the word card component available here is I'm going to import it. So at the top of the file, we'll just add a import statement and say import word card from. And then we will reference our source directory. Remember, we could do that with the period forward slash short, uh, shortcut. We're going to look within there for our component subdirectory and our word card.view file. Next, in order to use this component, we just need to register it with this view instance. And we're going to do that with a new option called components. And we could set it to an object and to specify the components we want to use, which in this case, it's word card. Now that that's imported and registered, coming down to our template in our cards div, each of the individual cards, which was previously just handled by this div, we're going to remove that and instead use our new word card component. And as you can see, we just treat it like a regular HTML element. We use a start tag and an end tag. And anywhere we're using this, it's going to inject our component into the page. Of course, though, we don't want just a single word card. We want one for each of our words. So we're going to uh, generate multiple, multiple of these using our v4 directive. We're going to say word in our shuffled words computed property. And then to get the individual word to the word card, we're going to use the prop that we had set up. And the way we pass a prop is we're just going to bind it like any other data. So we're going to use the vbind attribute. And what we're binding is uh, the word property. And we're going to set it to be whatever the word is as we're iterating through. And now that we see this uh, V4 in action here to display each of our word cards, I need to actually jump back to our word card component because when we pulled in the div or the structure for the word card here, we still had the V4 there, which made sense that we had it when it was in this context of app view. But here in the component context, we no longer need that because we're really just focusing on the individual card here. So I'm going to get rid of that V4. The other modification we can make here is when we're invoking check answer, we don't need to tell it what word to check for uh, because we should know what the word is based on the prop. So I'm actually going to remove that parameter from this method or remove it up here as well. And then uh, to support this change, the only other thing I need to do is anytime we're referencing word here now, we just need to reference it from the context of this instance. So we're going to prefix it with that this keyword. All right, so just keep that in mind. Anytime you're referencing the prop data that's being passed in, you'll just reference it as this dot, whatever that prop data is. Very similar to how you would with just a regular data property.
And with that change in place, the last thing we want to do before we test this out is pull in the styles that are specific to this component. So again, going to app.view, we're going to pull some code over from there. Specifically, I'm going to look through the styles and uh, find the classes and the selectors that are relevant to our word card. So we've got this card class, the uh, text input styling, the word itself, and then I think the correct answer is also in our template. Let's check this. Uh, yeah, so we are using that class there. So we'll grab that as well. And then finally, uh, the correct class. So I'm going to take all of that out of my parent component, move it over here to word card. All right, so saving those changes, let's uh, pull this up in the browser. Let's see how we're doing. Uh, looks like we might have an error in our application because as you can see, we're just getting a blank white screen. So something is preventing it from loading. Let me pull up the web inspector to see if we can figure out why. Go over to the console. Uh, yeah, we do have a syntax error. This is happening on line six in app.view. So let's see what I did wrong there. And it looks like I just forgot a comma after my components option before I got to my data option. So I'll just add that, save those changes. And in this scenario, I do have to refresh the page to see the changes just because that fatal syntax error prevented the application from ever even loading and therefore the hot module replacement couldn't uh, occur. So I'm gonna give this a fresh start and excellent. We're not getting any errors in the console and it looks like we've got our word cards uh, showing up as expected. Let's uh, test out their functionality. And perfect, it looks like our word cards are operating as expected. Uh, the global feedback up here though is not operating as expected. You can see it didn't increment, it didn't give us our final completion message. Uh, to understand why that is, let's go back to our code base. And the first thing I wanna do, going back to uh, the parent component app.view, um, we still have a check answer method in here, which you'll recall one of the first things we did is we took this and moved it over into our word card single file component. So I wanna get rid of this. Um, it's not actually being used within this component anymore. Uh, when we invoke check answer here in uh, from our input by hitting the enter key, it's gonna be invoking the check answer method within this component. So we don't need that anymore. Gonna get rid of that to avoid any confusion. Um, and then turning our attention to the check answer method within the component, we need to talk about how it's trying to communicate information about the parent component's data. Uh, specifically here, when the word is correct, it's trying to update correct count. But in the context of this component, correct count doesn't exist. Uh, it's not a prop that we've passed in. It's not a data property that we've defined local to this instance. Correct count is something that is defined and exists in the context of app.view. So what we need to figure out how to do is how to communicate from this child component to the parent component that it needs to update its own correct count. And the way we're gonna do this is with something called events. We can trigger an event from a component that would uh, send information up to the parent or the calling component. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of props, right? Props was how we got information from a parent component to a child component. With events, we're gonna be able to communicate information from the child component to the parent component. The way that we're gonna set this up, the way that events work is within here, rather than just trying to directly increment correct count, we're gonna emit an event. And the way we do that is we're going to reference this current view instance and there's a special method called emit starts with a dollar sign and then we're just going to come up with a custom event name and in this case i'll just call it increment correct count then in the parent component what we want to do is when we're using word card we want to set it up to listen for that event so I'm gonna use the V on directive, but rather than listening for a click or a key press or any kind of standard event, we're gonna listen for that custom event that we just created, increment correct count. And when that occurs, we need to trigger some action. And the action we will trigger, let's go ahead and add a method that its only job is gonna to be to increment that correct count value. So uh, just to keep things uh, consistent, we could also just call this method the name of the event itself. So its job is to take our correct count data property and just increment it by one. All right, so down here, when this event is triggered from the child component, we want to invoke this method. Let's test this out. 
Um, I am going to do a refresh on the page just because I actually have to go through and answer the words correctly to trigger that event and the increment count method uh, to actually see our data change up here. So we'll start with the blank slate, enter a word correctly, and excellent, we can see our counter is going up. And then there's our final uh, completion message. And with that, we're basically right back where we started from at the beginning of this video in terms of the application itself. But behind the scenes, we have uh, successfully reorganized things and uh, divided and conquered so that everything related to the word card is now handled via its own single file component. And to wrap up this video, let's just highlight some of the key things we learned. Uh, the first just being this idea that a single file component is really just its own little view instance with its own options, its own template, and its own CSS. And uh, other key things we learned was just about communication with components. So when we want to pass in information to components when we're utilizing them, we could do that by setting props. And then on the reverse, when we want to communicate information from the component to some parent component, uh, we can do that with custom events. Another key thing I want to recap and emphasize about single file components is just this whole paradigm of separation of concerns. This is something I talked about in the previous video about how uh, in our first introduction to components, it might seem like we're breaking separation of concerns because we're combining JavaScript, HTML, and CSS within one file. But remember, we're not breaking separation of concerns so much as we're just changing how we're thinking about separation of concerns, where we're separating based on the functionalities of our application rather than just arbitrarily based on the technologies. Um, that being said, there are some situations, though, where you will want to still separate based on the technology, specifically with CSS, right? You might be in a situation where in an individual component, there might be some global styles that you want to rely upon. Um, and if that's the case, you can still do that. You can actually link in external styles into your single file components. You're not restricted by having to explicitly de uh, define all the styles here. All right, so the long story short, you basically, you have flexibility and options in terms of how you want to organize things. Uh, same thing with the JavaScript. Um, you could import other JavaScript code into this component if things started to get really complex and you wanted to break things down further, you have that option to do that. And then the final point I want to make is actually jumping back a, a couple topics ago when we first introduced build systems. I just want to highlight how everything we're doing with single file components is only possible because we're working with build systems. Because what's happening behind the scenes when our code base is being compiled by our Vite build system, uh, there are special handlers there that are dealing with this dot view file. It knows what to do with the, the script and the template and the style and how that gets combined together. Um, if we weren't working with a build system, let's say we were back in uh, the early days of the series where we we're just trying to load things directly in our browser, we wouldn't be able to write code like this because our browser doesn't know what a view file is. It doesn't know what to do with this code. We need that processing step that a build system gets uh, that allows us to work in this particular structure. And I just mentioned that now just because uh, it was one of the benefits we briefly skimmed over when introducing build systems, but it was really kind of hard to appreciate until you've seen single file components in action. So uh, hopefully now having seen this, you understand uh, beyond just things like hot reloading, what are the advantages of working with a build system? We get uh, organizational structures like single file components. Uh, beyond that, though, this is as far as we're going to go with uh, components in this video. Looking forward, the next topic we're going to be tackling in the series is the composition API. This is something I've alluded to a couple times as we've gone through, uh, and, through and written our code, and it's definitely an important thing to understand as a Vue developer. So that is what we will tackle next.